Well folks, welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I am here, down at a beach, as you can see, a huge, vast, open beach. Now, I'm due, I'm down in the Bristol Channel, basically. Let's give you a story. Let's get my knapsack right. Uh, I had an invite to come down and fish um, on a boat, a uh, small private boat. So I thought, the wind's down, I'm gonna come down earlier. So I've come down earlier, gonna stay tonight and fish tomorrow, hopefully in the boat. And what am I doing? I'm gonna stay at St Aldrey's Bay Holiday Park where there's a caravan. At the bottom of that park is, yes, the sea. Now then, there's a high water mark and I'm driving past a low water mark. I'm trying to, he says, looking at his watch, 10 to 1 at 1 o'clock it's allegedly low water here now all those in the know on the Bristol Channel will know that's a new Hinkley Point power station being built over there this is also the biggest one of the one of the biggest tides of the year <laughs> it's like a tsunami there is no water it has gone totally it is going to come in like a positive train when it comes in so it's a huge rise and fall in the water being a giant spring tide what we call an equinox spring tide i got no choice because i thought the water was just here and i just realized that shiny mud i'm looking at there it's not even water so i'm going to have to wait what i'm going to do is look down here and see if i can't find as i do when i always come to this beach some snags because snags some leads because people cast into the snags you can see here it's all boulders it's a mass of boulders there look and obviously, if you're using grip leads, because it's an area of big tide, you will get uh, a few lead loss. Most people can't be bothered to walk all the way up there, or all the way down there. They fish here. Well, actually, I am. But when they're at high water here, they can't, if they distance cast with a big wind coming this way to you, it kills your cast, it drops you in the rocks, there should be some snaggy areas down there. Someone's had a bushcraft fire here, look at this. They're everywhere, those bushcrafters. The theory being, I've got one till four, four thirty-ish here with the tide flooding in, after which I, I'm going to move because I will be losing some leads. Then I'm going to go and book in the uh, St Aldrey's Bay Holiday Park, get my gear in the caravan, have something to cook and eat. I go straight down for the high water mark down at St Aldrey's below the cliffs there. My hunch is I'm going to catch something up there. I'm going to be using smaller baits than I normally use. And here, who knows? It is known as a good fish mark, but it's also known as a one of those marks, good fish or nothing. Generally, it's nothing for me. So I don't see one other person here. Not surprising, is it, when there is in fact no water. Let's get down there and see if I can't pass five or 10 minutes and find a lead or two. Okay, well, I got down the bottom of the beach. Didn't see any leads on the way down, but I don't think I've ever in my life seen the tide go out this far. And that's the truth on this particular beach. I mean, the water's 200 yards past where I thought it was. I've also never seen all the rocks sort of broken up, part, partly sort of joining the sand. It's normally quite a sharp demarcation line. You can see here now, I'm on sand, probably gonna get a booty somewhere. I can feel it coming. And looking at the beach, I normally fish that bay up there. There's freshwater stream pipe comes in down here. But I want to look at this, which I've never seen before because I've never been out this far. Normally I would get to about here on low water and then the water would be here. It's not there, but there's like a gully or something over here. I hope I don't get to disappear in some quicksand or something. And they find the camera, you know. They find the cam camera chip in like 80 years time. They just see this hat just, just above the mud. They say, what's that? That's that awesome, that old antique guy, awesome. Oh my God, look what's on his camera. Another blank trip on the beach. That looks really soft mud over the other side. Always worth having a look and a scout at low water. Because this is where you'll be casting your baits when the tide turns and comes in. But I'm just looking at these, oh, here we go, squishy. I'm not gonna go any further. It's like ridges there. Can you see that? All along there. I'm wondering when that tide comes in, it's gonna pour over there, fill out this pool here before it fills it up there. That's my rough sort of guess. So in about another 10 or 15 minutes, that's gonna start turning. It's like 150 yards back over there on that sloppy mud. See, there's a gully. I'm gonna try and go a bit farther forward here. I've not been out this far. That is just ridiculous. Look how far the tide comes out of this place, this Bristol Channel place. Whoa. Now look, you can see the gully and I know that's soft mud there. Right. 
Enough to get my feet wet. I've got to last 24 hours yet. I'm going to check out back up here, see if there's any leads. Well, wow, that's an unusual one, people. Let's take my head cam off. We showed these before, but that's that's a sort of live one there. You can see the I've moved it and the water's coming out. So what type of oyster is that? Who knows? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, four. Is that I'm gonna call it a rock oyster? Is that 14 years old? It sucked on there well. Somebody who knows something about I'm calling it a rock oyster, let us know. Also I'm noticing, because this is uncovered by a big spring tide, I'm going to call these like a sort of periwinkle or something. Who knows what these ones are? Just sticking on the rocks, or were sticking on the rocks, but luckily for it, far too small for bait. Another one, another one, another one. That's because this area here would not normally be covered over uh, would normally be covered over even on neap tide, it wouldn't go out that far, but this is a big spring tide, so it's gone to the horizon. Like a lunar landscape here. Oh, lunar landscape! Oh, great! Oh, oh my god! Thank you. I thought I'd just have a wander, I can't fish, I'd just have a wander around. And it was there, screaming at me, help, help, pick me up! I'm worth £2.50. Well, perhaps not, but a couple of pounds anyway. As a result, camera off, we're going to keep looking. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I was going to venture out across there, but I am in dangerous territory, guys. Now the boots are going to get full of mud, even more slippery on the rocks. Well, I don't see where the tide's turned yet. There's a rocky bunch out there. I wanted to go across there, but I'm going to have to go up and round. I can see that. I do like a bit of foraging, as long as I don't disappear up to my neck in mud and boulders. Well, I've got across a quagmire, folks, but I've come into a really pretty weird area. I'm on a bit of a bank here, but look at this stuff. I thought it was just mud. It's like... Is it some tube worm or something? Take a check. I've never seen these before. Not stuck up like this, look. Is there anything inside them? Is it some form of some form of tube worm? Oh yes, there we go. See if we can find one for you. Man eating tube worms. There he was, I did see him. There, just there. Oh, what is that? Is it some poisonous leech thing? Who knows what that is? Well, too small for bait, but it's absolutely surely there's going to be fish. Look at the amount of worm casts over there. I mean, maybe I should be cast in here, I don't know. I don't want to get stuck on that smooth stuff. It's even down here, look. It's just, there's, a, there's a worm there, just there. Very, very small. They may make a biggest sort of hole, but they're a small worm. Well, I'm not going to go over there. I would say it's a good. I'm just going to try. I'm not going to go over there. Oh, shit. <laughs> sorry about that, guys. <laughs> That's really deep. Can you imagine if I got stuck there and the tide comes in and I've got no phone signal? Yes, it's a one way ticket. I think. Discretion is a better part of valour in a situation like this. Retri retire or retreat. I think I've pushed my luck, I've got my one lead. I'd like to be able to live long enough to cast it, that's one thing. But they are some weird, weird creatures. All across there is thousands of them. I've never seen anything like that, that is weird, weird, weird. Well, I'm not finding any more uh, ledge people. Even though there's a very slight breeze, I thought, what's that rippling noise? I've just turned around and I can actually hear the tide. It is coming in so fast. I can hear that little popping sound. You know, it's, it's just trickling and running in. So it's actually running in here. So I'm going to work my way back to my gear. I've moved this side of that stream because I figured maybe that soft stuff where I was looking earlier on that trench, this looks slightly deeper depression. It might actually fill up a bit quicker. So. I'm over there, there's the pipe, I'm over there, 
the stream you can see just wet there I'm just this side of it and the problem being I can see now I should be fishing I can't the tide's so far out but it will come in quickly but I figure I'm only going to get maybe two hours fishing here which might be about three casts out and I'm going to go back and I think I'm going to set my gear up and just wait when I walk miles over those boulders King Canute himself is holding that water back and I'm actually I'm actually a member of the not the first nation of the second nation of England and the second nation of my nickname now is yes Billy Two Leads. So Billy Two Leads is sitting here on his bait box wondering when the water's going to come in but of course my second nation real name is Cojunto Medero Boldero which is Mexican for he who cannot read a tide table. I feel this is going to turn into a one cast wonder I might as well have a sandwich. Oh yes to rub salt in the wound the wife's done me tuna sandwich tuna <laughs> but it's designer it's not a bed roll oh no there's no bed roll there that's a panini or as I call it a panono oh one must have a panini darling it's food give it down your neck it's bread no sir in the vague hope that eventually the water will reach me I've got some misgivings about this I have to say it's coming in but man it's slow um, this is what I'm going to be using. I've got my trusty fixed spool or spinning wheel with like these 50 pound braid on there. The rig I'm going to be using is a sort of variation of that place rig I've had so much success with. Now I've made it out of 60 pounds right throughout. Let me just move this around this lead. So 60 pound rig body they call it from the swivel and the bead there. Uh, best to stick the hook in the trousers I find. At least you know where it is if it's in your kneecap. Right, you can see there, bead, a bead, a swivel, a long drop to a snoot, to a single hook, so it's going to be using fairly small baits. And then here, exactly the same principle, not going to clip, so no clips on there, not going to clip it down, just going to throw it out. A grip lead there, you can see a nice long drop there, so I've got two single hooks, I think they're two O's, with a nice long drop, and I'm going to put little combo baits on there, and just elasticate them together not too big I'm going to try and keep them narrow throw them out and the other rod I'm going to be using exactly the same rig 60 pound through eight trace, traces and you know snoods and rig body and uh, it's plain lead on that just going to throw it out because whew, I mean I'll be doing really casting on mud at the moment but I've now been here over an hour anyway eventually we should get a bait in the water well I'm going to have a walk up here because there's a big load of stonework up there while I'm waiting for that water to come in. I'm scouting and I have to say I spotted a ball of line, tracked the ball of line down to, I'm amazed anybody's walked up this far to be honest. I didn't think they'd come up all over these boulders, but there you go. A load of line. And it's terminating in a lovely free lead. Bit ancient, bit homemade, so whoever's out there's lost that one. I actually found it, we'll use it, and we'll also, like all anglers, probably lose it again. Swivels as well, can't grumble. And on clearing the beach. They did tell me a couple of years ago, I think it was, that uh, there used to be a historic, probably a hundred years ago, who knows? Who knows? They didn't tell me a hundred years ago, I'm not that old. But look, there used to be some form of jetty here, like a, like a dock, you can see the the prevailing waves and sea is going to come up the Bristol Channel here from the west. So the bulk of the waves moving these stones that they put down and quarried this square would hit this and that gave them a walking place to go up here. Oh, up we get. And you can see this is actually a proper stone quarried walkway. Proper stone jetty. It's all starting to get broken up now. Probably be a good place to fish from, I should think, for a while. If the you don't get cut off behind you, you know, if the water got up there, you'd work your way back. I'm very dangerous with the with the uh, weed over there. I've seen one limp it, but there you go. You can see the men of yesteryear were made of different stuff, and they thought about which way the waves are coming. They're going to do all this work. They don't want to wash away, do they? So they put an edgeways one there. Very good, very good idea. One assumes they went up over the hills there with their produce. You'll probably find there's a pathway up there somewhere where they used to take it off and uh, trade it, sell it, 
or whatever. Interesting. And I've been very squishy in there. Well, I'm turning archaeologist now because I can see up here there's symmetrical stones. All these boulders are here, but symmetrical stones even down to actually looking at it now. I'm standing on top of symmetrical stones going all the way there. So what's that all about? That's like some form of wall that used to be there. And the same here. You can see they've been quarried and cut and they're all in a line running in a straight straight line up here and over there second one there I reckon this was a some form of footpath years ago down to the base of what was a jetty and over here let's check that out there's something going on over there now I don't think you'll find that the kids built this as a project on their half term do you this looks like the base of what could possibly have been one of the first Egyptian pyramids but actually a Somerset pyramid that's what that was boy that were a Somerset pyramid years ago we were up there blocking the sun out now it's all taken away there's those stones again up there was this a big warehouse I don't know but look you can see the symmetry in the stones there probably hundreds of years ago definitely and there's stakes vertical in the uh, beach over there. This was definitely a working area years ago. Wow, probably go back and find my tackles washed away. Interesting though, I love a bit of beach coming guys. A bit of exploring on the beach doesn't go amiss. Keeps the mind active. I've had about an hour and a half here. I've left my uh, main bigger bait out for an hour and a half. Not a nibble. The other one I've got on a plain bomb. Uh, sand hill and dead ragworm, frozen ragworm, lashed together. I've had two casts with, and I'm just going to fish this out till about 4.15, another five or six minutes, and then I'm going to move on because I don't want to miss the high water coincided with dark down at the other beach. So this one you can see has come right in here filled right in but as yet no fish so I feel time to move on to the next place all right people I'm up here now at St Audrey's. I've got to show you this one. This is a brand new caravan. They do these. Look, you can't call these things caravans. You can't call them caravans. They are luxury mobile homes. Check this one out. I'm going to show you around this before because I'm going to have something to eat. Look what I've got. We guess being new it's going to have a microwave. Obviously it's got a brand new oven and that but I haven't got time for that. You know it's like rushing. So the wife's giving me. There we go. Italiano spaghetti bolognese. Uh, Three for six pounds. Much as I like saving money, I can't possibly eat three of those. I'm going to bug it in the microwave. I've got in the fridge here. Oh, say, somebody's left me a can of Hobgoblin. Not much else. That will go down, so I'm going to have something to eat before I dive down. Look at this place. If I was, I'm mentioning this purely because I know there's guys with wives and girlfriends that might want a bit of beach fishing, a bit of shore fishing, and the wives are going to want to know, are you, are you camping? Are we sleeping in the car? Are we having one of Graham's pallet cabins? No. Gas fires, television. This one's a brand new one, but they've got loads of different ones down here. And you can see the quality is. So wives and girlfriends, if your husband wants to go fishing or your partner wants to go fishing, this is what this one looks like. Fairly similar layout on all of them. Twin better here. God, it's hot in here. I'll switch that off. It's actually a twin bed one. Obviously, it's got gas central heating. It's not like sleeping in the car, is it? There's a double here. I think I'll do bigger ones. I think I'll do three bedroom ones. This is my boudoir. I think got everything there. You can see wardrobes, cupboards. Look, it's just like home. Home from home. The women love it. And here it is. Oh, en suite. I didn't. That's the first one I've been that's got this. An ensuite in there. As soon as I got it, I'm in this one. Hey, is, is there two? Am I being stupid? No, no, Graham, you're not being stupid. 
So for both bedrooms, you've got separate ones, a lovely big shower. So there you are, anybody who's interested. I'll tell you who will be interested, the fisherman. And the answer to that is why? It's because the beach fishing is just down there. There you can see the view I've got over the Bristol Channel. Welsh Wales on the other side. Shipping going up and down there. And literally just down the steps down the cliff there to Fabulous Beach. And generally it's about two hours up. You fish it around about at the top of the tide. So it'd be two hours up, two and a half down. But it's spring tide, so I'm going to bung this in here. In you go, my beauty. Nothing like home cooking. And then we better make sure, of course. Hey! Got no strength with my left hand. Look what I've done. I've done that. You know, it's like that song. It's hammer time. I've done that. Opening so many cans. There we go. That's what I like. I'm not a lugger man. Hobgoblin gold. Battery's all charged. Just check because I'm going to be fishing into the night. I'm trying to salvage something. Floodlights there. Camera lights there. I'm just going to let that uh, bing itself off and then I should be hitting that beach pronto. I'm hoping I can salvage a fish you know, as the light fades or I'm going to fish into the dark. Absolutely. Oh, it's hot. Daddy, it's hot. I'm going to give that another minute. This is as close to roughing it and bushcraft as I get, folks. There's rough in it and there's rough in it. Cheers. That's better than tea in a flask that's rancid and been there since five this morning, I can tell you. Spank bowl, a beer, that will keep me alive for at least another 12 hours. Well, here we are, folks, down on the beach, thank goodness. Spaghetti and hobgoblin beer has been dispatched. I am now residing on the beach. Beautiful surroundings. Calm, very sort of foggy overcast, low mist, still high pressure, no wind, no wind. Well, having said that, hang on a minute. I think it's no bites. But I've only just, I've only just thrown out is 10 to six, high water here. According to the tide table, ha ha ha, is seven o'clock. So I've got two up, two down, a bit less than that. But you can see here, beautiful setting. Great big cliffs here and up here, look at this, beautiful. I love coming down here. And these are much easier to walk over, all these. Just listen to this. See, you see all the water coming out the cliff there. Well, there you can see where I am. I can't be bothered to walk miles all the way down there. You know, just for a bit of peace and quiet, get away from people. No, they do come up and ask you, are you fishing? No, no, I'm playing around a golf. I'll tell you what you could do here. Mike could have a really good bushcraft fire on the beach, catch and cook on the beach. Well, the cook will be okay, but we've got to get the catch first. All oh, right, here's a tip. Try to bring just a piece of flat wood with you, about five inches long, that's all, because you do not want to cut your bait on stones. It will blunt the knife. And I always try, because I'm always losing things, I'm always losing all you anglers know, bait thread, God, if you drop it on a shingle beach, it's gone. Um, your hand wipe towel, you can keep two. You can keep, I should keep one here and one just hooked over there, you know, but I don't. I generally bring one, but I like to, if I do in a night session, I always want the knife, the bait thread there, and that piece of wood, the knife cuts into the wood and you don't blunt the knife. So just look, just a piece of wood. That's all it is. Scrap wood, I've got four or five bits. When I go up there, I can drop it in the bin, rubbish bin, so I don't have to put it in the car. That is a piece of fresh mine head herring, or freshly frozen, I should say. Um, quite a lot of rubbish in there. You don't really want to go in there. I'm using that as a seat now. I did, I did bring a seat with me, but oh, I don't think I can be bothered to, uh, to go all the way up that cliff and get the seat again. I just hope it doesn't rain because I have no wet gear. I just need to sneak about three hour session in here. So I've got my beloved shotgun spinning rod just thrown out ever so close just out there. 
30, 40, say 40 yards. I've got frozen ragworm. Ragworm doesn't normally freeze. I did have about a quarter of a pound left. And I did thought I'm going to freeze it in one gob and see what happens. Uh, it's got that and a sandhill strap strapped on the back of it. And then I've got on the left hand rod, I've got uh, a piece of herring and squid and ragworm all lashed together. I'm pretty much the same on the other one there. Little combo, but I think that one's squid. Tell a lie, I think that one's squid and sandhill combo. So I'm comboed up to the eyeballs. I just need to get a nibble. I feel closer that I get to seven o'clock, not just being high water, but darkness. I might actually, I might actually be able to catch something. I'm just trying to catch anything at all. It's one of those trips that, you know, I'm on a boat trip tomorrow. I'm trying to salvage something on the way down. Just not come down, go to sleep, get up, go boat fishing. I want to try and catch a fish off the shore as well. And I'm thoroughly enjoying myself. Who wouldn't, in the peace and quiet, of these surroundings. And there's further bait, of course. Oh yes, oh yes. Not only is there a spag bowl in the caravan, mobile home, sorry, cinnamon buns. Why not indeed? Well, no bites, people, but I was wandering along doing my beach combing thing, as you know, and I thought, my goodness, those storms are throwing up, A, a lot of weed along there, which I hope doesn't go back on my lines up there, but B, an awful lot of driftwood. Now that's been out in the ocean for ages and washed around. Salt doesn't normally burn, but as I had a lighter, I thought, I'm going all bushcraft. And there we go, that's gonna keep me warm. If I, could, I had a bit of trouble lighting up, I've got no paper, nothing. I had to uh, get some shavings off a tiny piece of wood, but once you get that heat going like that, it will catch. So Michael would be proud of me. A beach fire and of course I've even got one cinnamon bun left I could have that toasted should I so require it and it won't be cold tonight that's for sure it's just starting to get dark but having good fun with the fire so just just so you know salt water on the on, on the driftwood doesn't normally sort of start very very well it doesn't start burning very well so you need to get something hot, you need to get, if you can get a fire going, keep at it. Don't shoot, don't shoot, you can take my watch, it's a Casio. Also stones explode when it gets very hot. Um, what you want to do is try and get a good fire base going first, so it's hot enough to dry out the salt in the wood. That's what I found, now I've made a, a channel around the outside, just shortly before I was shot then. Like, so all the air which is coming this way, I can feel this very slight oxygen flow this way, is going up in that channel and then I'll make a wigwam of it, let it build up and then when it burns down, that was when it'd be nice and warm and I can feed it. Great fun. Right, I don't get shot and there's absolutely, some of the wood's a bit soft, a bit wet. There's no shortage of wood here. I think I had a bit of a nibble on that, other, but the tide's pulling left, I don't understand that. It's pulling left. It could have been a bite. It could have been just the grip lead, you know, bumping. Wow, it's hot now. I better move before I get blasted again. Now don't forget, if you do like beach fires with small stones, they do go off bang, they expand, bang, off they go, it's just the way it is. I've had loads of beach, beach bonfires cooking, loads and loads when I was kids, when I was younger. It's just one of those things. Was, oh, no, no, a little nibble. I've had a very, very small nibble on the close-in rod. Assume the position. <laughs> Assume the position. That was definitely a nibble on that rod there. But this is when I'd expect it, just before high water. That middle one, very small fish. Just like to get one fish out of this. My worry is that the high tide mark has now lifted all that weed off and I hope it's not gonna suck it back out there before I can catch a fish and clog all the lines up. But what a setting on the beach, on my own. Blazing beach fire going there. All clean wood, tidying the beach up and having a good time as well. And even at my age, people wonder why, why do you go fishing on your own ground? That's why, that's why. Peace, quiet, solitude. Well, I left half a can of beer hobgoblin back in the fridge. I so wish I bought that now, so wish I bought it. That's hot, so it's sure to be another stone or two going off. Well, folks, it's, uh, it's dark now. The fire's going, still exploding. 
but really toasty and warm. Tiny little bites on that rod, nothing else happening, but it's now about 10 past seven. So I know obviously it's around high waters, around seven, but you can also tell this, but you hear the sound, it's quiet coming in, not when there's a big pounding sound, but it's quiet coming in. Then it goes sort of still the waves at the top of the water. Then you know when it turns, generally on shingle and you know small stone beaches, you'll hear a sort of roaring sound as it sucks the rubbish back and all the stones start rolling down as it's going to go out. So that's a little guide for you, you know, if you hear that sort of roaring sound where it's slightly louder than it was, say, half an hour earlier, you'll know the tides generally turn and it's ebbing. I'm about to combust here. Not a nibble. One, one, one little, definitely a small fish type pouting bite on the middle rod there, the, the spinning rod on the inside. I've just baited them all up again. Well, I haven't I topped the bait off? because I haven't got a lot of good bait, I've got no good bait, I've got rubbish bait. But there doesn't seem to be anything out there at all, I thought it might be some whiting, something like that. There's a the high water mark, and if I put the mic down there, you should be able to hear that slightly larger roaring sound as a decent wave takes it back. Yeah, you can hear you can hear it then. I'll try and put the mic down there. You might be able to hear it. Hopefully, you'll hear that. Where the stones get tumbled over. Jesus, what? <laughs> I swear the uh, cameraman gets tumbled over as well. Beautiful, quiet night. A bit too quiet on the bites front, but hey ho, that's fishing. It's a lovely still night to be out. With my fire going as well. Beautiful. Shame I didn't bring anything to cook because I could have cooked on that, you know. Man, the dogfish saves the blank. I'm going to call it a Somerset shark. Saves the blank. Never has a dogfish been so gratefully accepted as it is tonight. I could almost put him on the fire and cook him now, couldn't I, really? Now I'm going to let him go. Thank goodness I got that. He was there tapping away for a while. So, would I get another one or not? I don't care. Well, I'd like to get another one. I don't think I will. I'm looking, I'm looking, nothing on those ones, but at least I've come out and I've got a fish. Worth coming out for. Great bonfire. Let's get this guy back. Good result. I'm getting bites on two rods now. Oh, wow, we, wow, we. Again, by some of as well. I missed that last one. See if there's anything on this one. Oh! Come on. Shame I lost that other fish. I don't know what it was. Probably a dog fish. So it's got a little bit heavier. I don't want to lose him in the close in. Feel like he came off. Has he come off? No, he's pulling really, really hard. No, no, don't bury me. Don't bury me. What the hell is it? Hit it with the big light. Oh, it's another doggy. Here he comes. What is it? It is! Ha ha! Another dogfish. Well, boys. How life turns around quickly, doesn't it? Fishing. And that's why we go fishing, because you just never know, especially on the beaches. There you go. I had a hell of a bite on that other one, and I felt a decent fish. I don't think it was a doggy. It's a big, it's a biggest sized dogfish, this one. I know it's only a dogfish, but there's a lot of people out there who like to catch something like that.
Right people, I've come down the next morning. Early. I don't like getting up six o'clock in the morning. There's people, being a Saturday, there are already people where I was fishing last night. Weather's changed, bigger surf. But what's happened is, I'll show you, <clears throat> I'm being pushed right up the beach here. I've had to come to the left, which I don't like fishing. But if you can see here, there's one band of high water. I'm a bit concerned the other one's there. That's slippery lot, and this stuff does come down every once in a while. I'd rather not be under five million tonnes of it. So although I cast out here, I've only been out about 10 minutes. The tide's still coming in. And what it is, people, just so you know, big spring tides, which I've known before, affected by air pressure. And we're talking with some guys and they said, the high, very, very high pressure we've had. Imagine the spring tides coming up and the air pressure is pushing down, it's high pressure, so it's pushing all that water up. So it's actually going high, higher than you would normally expect, and indeed lower. So when I was looking, uh, when I was looking out at those little worm cast things at the other place, um, there's two other guys down there as well. So being a Saturday, there's plenty of guys. One, two, three, there's at least another three to the right of me. Those worm casts, when I was talking to Craig, he said, I haven't seen those in like 10 years. So that shows you, he said, the tide has never gone up that far. So you people have seen something very rare. And they call it down here coral, where those worms are making those casts, like a coral bed. It was huge. So I've learned something there, and I've seen something I probably might not, I might not ever see in my lifetime again. There's a huge, uh-oh, that's why I'm moving people. And I'm going to get pinned against this cliff, so just be aware of things like that. I've got rods out, I've got one rod down there, I'm going to move my other gear down here. I think, uh, as usual, it is Billy Two Leads needs to read the tide tables again. And the air pressure. But I'll give it a couple of hours, just see what I can get, but you can see, what a setting. And look up here. <laughs> How about that for a setting, with all those millions of tonnes of... Um, wet cliffs with the rain we had last night. So I don't know if we're going to lose gear, but it's a lovely setting. Great big spring tide. I seem to be holding out there. You never know. I might get lucky. Folks, I'm uh, pretty well pleased I moved from back down there. If you can see down this way, I would have been not quite pinned against those cliffs down there, but close to it. I think I'm okay, just by the sound of the shingle being uh, sucked back makes a noise. As I said uh, last night, you hear that sort of roop. Uh, you heard a bit of it there, like a roaring sound, it means the tide's sucking the shingle in this back. You hear them sucking the shingle back. So I figure it's top of the tide. I was a bit concerned down here, the high tide weed was wet. I'm thinking now it wasn't the sea, it was the rain last night. So I probably uh, panic over, as I say, panic over. Panic over Mr. Mannering, don't panic. But it's still, it's still getting pushed up by the waves. No bites as yet. A lot of weed in that water. Here we go, here we go, what a result. I thought it was a plastic bag. Oh my God, a thornback ray. Oh, 
look out, look out, oh shit, shit, double shit. Well, not too bad, got the fish anyway. Where's my camera bag? That's safe. There we go. Oh, let's get him unhooked. Oh, that was lucky or what? Let's get that hook out. Boys, he's all arched up. And there is a nice ray. What a result, what a result. Just put that time in. And there's another result. Look, a double booty. Why not stand until you get a third one, Graham? I don't know what you're gonna get at this because I'm nearly out of SD card. But there you go. Let's turn him round for you. Wow, I've got to watch those thorns, people. A nice thornback ray. I mean, made up. I saw the bite, but um, I was investigating sand fleas at the time for you guys. And when you hold them, there's a little gap just here. You do not want to hold in the jaws there. They have incredible jaw power. So there's a little thumb hole, if you like, there that you can hold these up. Oh, great, man. I'm so pleased to catch this one. <laughs> Get right in. There we go. I was, it was bumping along the bottom, and I thought, you know what? Have I snagged or what? And it planed up on the top, and because I got braid, I could haul it, and I got it in. So brilliant. Let's get this guy back. So pleased with that. That was so worth, so worth getting a double booty for. Well, people, pleased with that, but I've got a double booty now. The tide is just, I can't believe it should have turned like half an hour ago, it's still coming in, so that's that high pressure. And you have to ask yourself, all those sand fleas, like migrating and panicking, trying to get out of the cliffs, how do they know, are they affected by the, they wouldn't know the tide table, surely. They don't read the tide tables. Well, come to that, I don't think I can really read the tide tables. But what I'm thinking is, did they know there's gonna be an extra surge of water created by the high pressure? Do they feel the high pressure? Oh, do do, here we go. Watch out, boys. <laughs> I'm what you call fishing on the edge, literally. If I'd have been down there, I'd have been washed away. <laughs> I'm hoping it's gonna turn. It's like over half an hour. And it's still barreling in here. It's got to be the high pressure. So I've learned something there as well. But I've got a full back rain. And I've got double, double booties. I'm totally swimming in water now. But I'm not giving up yet. Wow, <laughs> here we go. Here we do go. Ah, there we go, peeps. That's that rig I made up. As you can see there. As you can see, guys. Nice dogfish. Saw the bite, thought it was a ray. It's turned into a dogfish, but listen. Beggars can't be choosing a fish is a fish. I think, thankfully, I think the tide is now on its way down. Got about probably another hour, which is time for one more cast. Well, I think we're done, boys. The tide has absolutely fallen out, which it will do because it is a giant spring tide. So, getting a bit cold now as well, standing around. Dogfish and a thornback, I'm happy enough with that. Just goes to show you, Last night is, is totally different to today. The tide is bigger. There's a little bit more ripple, a little bit more movement on the water. There's a sort of red foam in the, uh, in the tide line there, which I don't, I don't really fancy too much. I don't know, but it's, sort of, it's going out about 20, 30 yards, but it might be filtering out further. So probably a bit too far for me to go over the top of that. There's guys down there, they packed up. I think one guy had a dogfish I saw. It might be right down the point there. But this will fall right away, it'll be absolute mud flat, so I'm going to call it quits. I'm going to go up, I'm going to have some breakfast now, a cup of tea in that caravan, in the warm, because I'm getting cold now. And, uh, well, I've had a good time, haven't I, really? Let's face it. Could have done with that bonfire last night, this morning, because it's cold. OK, boys, thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the notification bell. Go over to Mike's channel, TA Outdoors, and hit the sub bell on that one. Sub and bell. Sub bell? Sub and bell on that one. We'll see you guys next time. Who knows where? Could be on freshwater, could be on salt. If I can get out there, I'll try and catch a fish for you. Let's see you next time.